Hi everybody, this is Monesh T, lecturer, faculty of physiotherapy, department of sports physiotherapy. Today we are going to see the practical demonstration about the passive movement. The passive movement is nothing but which is performed by the therapist in a smooth and controlled manner to the patients who are bedridden and who will not be able to do the anatomical movements by themselves. Okay. Uh, mostly this type of passive movements will be given to uh, neurological patients like uh, stroke, hemiplegic conditions, uh, muscular dystrophy, this kind of patients can be treated with passive movements. So now we will see the demonstration of passive movement to each joint. For performing the passive movements, there are certain principles. They are first positioning and relaxation and then uh, fixation of the joint proximally and then giving traction to the joint so that uh, the adhesions can be broken and the movement will be free. Friction free movement will be available by giving traction. And then uh, full range of motion to the uh, joint should be given. And finally, the speed and duration of the movement. So these are the principles which should be followed when we performing a passive movement. Now we are going to see the passive movement to each and every joint in our body. Now we are going to see the passive movement for shoulder joint. First we will see about the flexion movement. So the patient in supine lying position in a relaxed manner and then uh, therapist should be in a walk stance position. The proximal aspect of the shoulder joint should be stabilized and the distal aspect the wrist should be held by the therapist and then the movement flexion movement should be done in the slow and controlled manner. While performing the movement, the joint which we are moving should be distracted. So next we are going to see the shoulder abduction passive movement. So for shoulder abduction the patient should be in the same supine lying position and the shoulder the upper part should be stabilized. And then the arm should be moved outward slowly by giving mild traction. So the next movement is shoulder internal and external rotation. So patient in same uh, supine lying position and then external rotation. Okay, wow. So next we are going to see the passive movement for shoulder extension. So the patient should be made to lie in the side lying position. The shoulder joint should be stabilized and the arm should be moved backward so next uh, joint we are going to see is the elbow joint so in elbow joint there are two movements flexion and extension at first we will see about the flexion of elbow joint passive movement. So the proximal aspect of joint should be stabilized and then traction should be given to the elbow joint and then full range of flexion movement should be done. So the next we are going to see about the uh, radio ulnar joint. So in radio ulnar joint we have two movements one is supination another one is pronation. For radio ulnar joint supination and pronation movement the proximal aspect that is the elbow joint to be stabilized and then mild traction to be given to the uh, radio ulnar joint and then the joint should be moved to supination and then pronation. So 
So the next joint, what you are going to see is the wrist joint. So in wrist joints, there are four movements available: that is flexion, extension, radial deviation, and ulnar deviation. At first, we will see the flexion and extension movement. So the proximal aspect of this joint to be stabilized, and then a mild traction force to be given, and then the joint is moved into flexion. This is extension, flexion. flexion and extension gradually similar way the uh, traction to be given and the joint to be moved to radial deviation and ulnar deviation this is the radial deviation and this is ulnar deviation so the next is the movements of the passive movement to the thumb so in thumb we have flexion extension abduction adduction and then circumduction sorry opposition movement okay so the first we will see the flexion extension movement so we need to support the carpal joints and then give mild distraction to the thumb and then move the thumb into flexion and extension next abduction and then adduction and then opposition So the next is the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint flexion and extension. So we need to support the proximal aspect of the metacarpophalangeal joint, and then hold the fingers together, and then move the joint for flexion and extension. Next, we are going to see the passive movements for the lower limb joints. First, we will see the movements for hip joint. The patient's thigh should be stabilized and a long lever, long axis traction to be given, and then the joint should be moved to flexion. So this is hip flexion. Yeah. Now we will do the passive movement for hip joint, external rotation and internal rotation. So for performing this, the knee should be bent to 90 degrees. And then for internal rotation, the leg should be moved outward. So this is the internal rotation of hip joint. In the same position, we can do the movement for uh, ex external rotation also. In this, the leg should be moved inward. Next, we are going to see the passive movement of abduction and adduction to the hip joint. So, this can be done in the supine position. So next movement what you are going to see is the abduction adduction movement of the hip joint okay in this the patient should be in the supine lying position the therapist in walk stance position holding the distal aspect of the leg and the upper hand should be holding the knee joint and the leg should be moved through abduction and adduction abduction and then adduction. So next movement for the hip joint is hip extension. For this the patient should be in side lying position. The knee is flexed. The leg should be moved 
backward in a slow and rhythmic manner so this is hip extension so next we are going to see for the passive movement for the knee joint okay in this the proximal aspect of knee joint to be fixed that is stabilized and distally the ankle joint should be held with the other hand and the joint should be moved for flexion in a smooth and rhythmic manner so this is the flexion and extension of knee joint next we will see the ankle joint movement so for an ankle joint we have uh dorsiflexion and plantar flexion inversion and eversion movement so the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movement of the ankle joint this is dorsiflexion and this is plantar flexion dorsiflexion plantar flexion dorsiflexion and plantar flexion so next movement is the inversion and eversion movement so this is the inversion and this is the eversion movement thank you